Okay, so this video is a little different than my normal video, and it's mainly to show off this uh, online milling calculator that I made uh, to help show the results and predict um, speeds and feeds. You can find a few different versions of speeds and feeds calculators online. This one has a few different unique features that make it stand out a little bit. Um, the first one being that uh, it's all done, all the calculations and everything are done um, on your computer. They're not actually sent over to any website. So the web page loads and then all the calculations just run as a script uh, on your computer. So as a result, um, updates are immediate. So if I were to change the from a two to three tooth tool, and you can see all the results over here update just immediately without having to submit a web page and wait for a response back. Uh, another difference that is nice is that uh, it actually saves your settings. So you can um, set this up like you want. And then if you were to, um, let's say, change this to a single tooth uh, cut, and then we reload the web page, it actually reloads in, uh, your, your settings. And so it will remember your, your previous settings. Another convenient thing is that you can save several different settings. So you see on the left here, you have cut selection and initially they're all set to default, but I can change this one's name to like, you know, two tooth and this will be three tooth. And then you can flip between them and these all get saved every time uh, you change them. And the way that they're saved isn't by sending it to a server. They're actually just saved locally on your browser. So, uh, it's, it's very quick. And um, the side effect though, is that if you access the website from a different browser or from a different computer, it's not necessarily gonna have your settings saved. Um, I do have some buttons here so you can import and export these specific settings um, to, to a file, and then you can transfer the file if you want to. Another thing that's convenient about this versus some of the other speeds and feeds calculators is that uh, there's a easy switch units button that just immediately switches all the units to metric. So you can have Imperial on everything and then it'll automatically convert everything to metric, uh, including all the output values, um, just with one simple click uh, that's instant. And so you could, for example, uh, switch to metric and say, well, what about an eight millimeter tool and get a result. Uh, and then you can, if you want, you can switch back into Imperial and it will convert the values over. Another thing that's a little different is uh, this graph here. So this is showing you the, uh, the cutting force as the tool rotates over 360 degrees. So you can see with the two teeth, that's why there are two peaks here. So there are two peaks as, as each tooth enters the cut. And then because of these cutting parameters, you can see that the one tooth enters the cut and then leaves the cut before the next one even starts. But if we were to increase the radial um, cut, uh, so let me set this back to uh, a quarter inch tool. And then if we are, let's say, uh, 0.15 width of cut, um, you can see that it enters the cut and is in the cut for much longer. And in fact, if you turn it into slotting, you can see what that looks like, which is where, uh, in that case, we're never actually leaving the cut. Although you'll see with only two uh, teeth, when the next tooth engages, the last one is almost out of the cut. And that's due to the depth of the cut and the helix angle. So you can play around with different settings here. Um, for example, I have a uh, three flute uh, YG-1 Alu power end mill. And one of the nice things about it is that you can take uh, because of the helix angle, um, you can take a pretty moderate depth of cut, like a quarter inch depth of cut, and you'll see that it's actually keeping most of the teeth engaged most of the time, which leads to a little bit less vibration. And that's one of the things that inspired me to put this on here is because I don't have a very rigid mill. So anyone without, without a very rigid mill or a router, um, this is a good way to kind of predict how much vibration you're going to get uh, in the machine. And the scale of the graph is this peak instantaneous cutting force. So in this case, uh, you can see the, the, the peak cutting force and you can also adjust the parameters um, see, and play around with those and see how that change uh, the, the cutting force and also um, how constant the cutting force is. Because the more constant it is, um, I found that leads to a little bit less vibration. So let me go over just some of the different inputs and outputs and then also some um, some values that I found when working with a, a lighter weight hobby mill 
uh, in terms of uh, finding good speeds and feeds. I've uh, cut aluminum mostly, so that's what this ultimate tensile strength corresponds to is 6061 aluminum. You can find uh, these values online for different different materials. The helix angle isn't always published, uh, but I found that the, the alu power, a lot of the aluminum specific end mills tend to be 45 degrees. You can also, you can definitely find 60 degree end mills, but um, if they're not stated, I found they're usually around 30 degrees. The stick out is referring to the amount of distance between uh, the collet or whatever tool holder you have and the tip of the tool. And that's used along with the tool, tool modulus, tools Young's modulus to compute average tool deflection. Uh, if the if the tool deflection is is too high, you can find one that uh, it won't cut perfectly to size because the tool is flexing, and so it's not actually taking away as much material as uh, you might think. Uh, and then the other issue is if this gets too high, obviously you start to risk tool breakage. The tool wear factor and the power efficiency are factors that play into the computation of the horsepower required for the cut. Um, so the tool wear factor means that, oh, the, the blades aren't necessarily as sharp, uh, perfectly sharp. And the power efficiency refers to the fact that uh, some amount of horsepower is lost in the belts and other inefficiencies in the motor. Uh, and so, like I said, those are used to compute the power. The power of the tool is the power required for the cut. And then the power of the motor is the uh, taking into effect the, in, into account the power efficiency losses for the motor. So you can kind of understand, hey, my machine has this much horsepower. Um, is this cut going to be okay? Uh, radial width the cut and axial depth the cut are the cut parameters, um, and feed per tooth uh, plays into the feed rate and the cutting speed. Um, you can find published uh, values on what cutting speeds to use. The material removal rate uh, tells you uh, how much material you're going to uh, get per, per uh, amount of time. So uh, for this particular cut, um, almost half an inch uh, cubic inch per minute ideal uh, material removal rate if you're in the cut the whole time. The chip thickness is uh, is useful. It's The chip thickness is going to be related to the width of cut and the feed per tooth. Uh, so essentially, even though you're feeding this amount uh, per tooth, um, the fact that you're only cutting with a very small edge of the of the tool means that actually the, the chip is going to be thinner than you think. Uh, and so this gives you an, a value here. Um, if, you, if you start to go too low, you can get into issues where the tool is just rubbing and isn't able to actually engage in a cut in an expected way. And so you can see um, tool wear start to become a problem. Uh, it's less common in aluminum, uh, but in steel you need to be very careful about that. The tangential cutting force is the uh, essentially like the average cutting force uh, over the cut, and it gives you some idea of um, how much uh, resistance your um, axis drive motors are going to feel. Tool deflection I already talked about, and then the peak instantaneous cutting force again is the the maximum cutting force that you'll that the tool will experience as as it moves through the cut. So if I go back to a cut here that isn't as deep, you'll see that the peak instantaneous cutting force is about the same as it was before, uh, but then in between that it's lowering, and that's why the the cutting force listed here is lower, is because on average the cutting force is lower, but um, you're still getting up to a fairly high peak cutting force. And so in terms of in, uh, if, if you're noticing like um, issues with the machine rigidity causing vibration, that's usually caused by the difference between the, the peak instantaneous cutting force and the lowest uh, cutting force. And so this kind of a cut um, will tend to make the machine ring a little more, even than this deeper cut, which seems odd, uh, but that I found that to, to actually be the case. Of course, this all depends on your type of machine and, and where your machine is rigid and where it isn't rigid. Uh, there are little tiny um, peaks and valleys here. If you notice those, those aren't actually real. Those are just uh, side effects of the, um, the calculation that it's doing. It's doing some approximations. Although these, these computations are based on uh, formulas that I've found, um, they're not necessarily going to be 100% reality. I found that this is a pretty good um, calculator for for cutting with aluminum uh, at these types of feeds and speeds. But if you start going too far outside of this, like if you're using face mills, I don't think this is going to be very accurate. Um, if you're cutting uh, much harder materials, this becomes less accurate. And so yeah, that's that's the disclaimer is that I've really only tested this 
thoroughly for different types of cuts in aluminum uh, on my partic particular machine, which is pretty high RPM, pretty low rigidity. And that's all I wanted to talk about. So uh, yeah, just go to the website, give it a try. Um, you might find it a useful tool. That's it.